Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Tom Worth Jr. and uh, today I wanted to talk about, just a friendly reminder, uh, about why anyone associating yourselves with Donald Trump will, will end poorly for you. Uh, I'm not sure, uh, oh, and how he can never <laughs> admit he was wrong. Never, ever, ever, ever he uh, admit he was wrong. Um, and and, that, and how that brought to mind uh, a guy named Christopher Columbus, who uh, today we're, you know, you have Columbus Day on the calendar, and I know that upsets some people to call it that. Um, discovering the New World uh, in 1492, in October, uh, after a three-month journey from Europe. Um, he was not Spanish. He was from Genoa in Italy. And he got the Spanish to finance it, but he actually landed in the Bahamas and and actually made four voyages and never made it to the United States, never made it to Cape Cod, certainly, up near where the the uh, pilgrims made landfall on the Mayflower. Um, he never made it to North America at all. He did make it to Venezuela in South America on his fourth and final trip. But uh, other than that, he was basically the Caribbean and in those islands. So um, he did go to his grave firmly convinced that he had discovered China and India. That, and he, he just never admitted that the this was not China and India. Uh, much like Donald Trump will never admit that he was wrong. I don't know if any of you guys remember the, uh, the Sharpie hurricane map incident. Uh, the, I was reminded of this when I was just looking up some stuff. I actually listened to uh, a book on Cuba a while back and that gave me all the information in, in great detail about Christopher Columbus. Um, and I had also listened to uh, a long book about the conquistadors and how they ravaged the new world and, uh, and the, the indigenous people there. Um, but uh, there was a hurricane in 2019, early September, and this was the kind of the Sharpie Gate. I, I, you know, Trump famously has like a, a drawer full of nine billion Sharpies. That's that's all he can ever write with, because that's really all he's ever asked to write in his life is his signature. He doesn't actually write anything, um, and. And we had a hurricane, and it was Hurricane Dorian. I had to look that up, too. I couldn't remember what it was called. But we had the forecasts, and we had where it was going to impact. It, it was coming in from, from the ocean, uh, from, from the Caribbean, across the eastern side of Florida, maybe up towards uh, Georgia or, or South Carolina. A very, very clear storm path and clear warnings from... Uh, the NOAA from NOAA, and Trump, for some reason, put out a tweet over the weekend uh, to stay safe and how this was going to impact in Florida and Georgia and South Carolina and Alabama. And uh, the <laughs> NOAA quickly put out a correction saying, no, 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 Alabama, don't freak out. You guys are not impacted by this storm. It's it's fine. You're not, it's, it's going way east of you guys. You don't need to worry about this. You don't need to evacuate or go buy your groceries or board up your windows. You're, you're fine. Basically to that effect is what they were trying to avoid is panic by Alabama because people of Alabama hadn't heard they were in the path yet until Trump's tweet. And rather than just leaving it alone or correcting himself he, he doubled down on it, as he always does. <laughs> he he pulls up, it, they you know he pulls up a map in the Oval Office. He has a map on on a you know he's standing at it, and the map has just to show that he's right. It's a map with the, you know it's official NOAA map with with the hurricane track and the cone of probability and all that, and then it ends you know over Florida, and. Someone, someone had taken a sharpie, a black sharpie, and extended the path out 
to where it included a little bit of Alabama. And <laughs> it was it was just again, we're talking SNL level of, of comic ineptitude here with this dude. Um and uh he he had appointed a guy um at the at Noah and this this guy was now acting director of Noah and he, just to prove that he just to not admit that he was wrong he <laughs> so great um okay so after Trump's misstatement with his tweet that it would include Alabama just 20 minutes later, the National Weather Service in Birmingham, Alabama, tweeted, quote, Alabama will, all caps, not see any impacts from hashtag Dorian. We repeat, no impacts from Hurricane Dorian will be felt across Alabama. The system will remain uh, to the far east. So they very quickly corrected him and, I don't know, um... I don't know if you, you'll be seeing that or not. If not, I'll, I'll post a picture of that map uh, for Trump. So on September 4th is when he showed that map to reporters. Um, <laughs> he, re he reportedly ordered his aides to obtain an official retraction of the Weather Bureau's comment that the storm was not headed for Alabama. So he is digging into this for days. This is how petty he is. So then two days later on September 6th, Noah themselves published an unsigned statement because nobody wanted to be associated with this, saying that National Hurricane Center models, quote, demonstrated that tropical storm force winds from Hurricane Dorian could impact Alabama when in fact they could not, right? Um, so then multiple in agencies started investigating the prop a possibility that Trump administration officials exerted political influence over NOAA, over the weather. Does this sound familiar? Trump politicizing even the weather. <laughs> so they completed investigations and released a statement that found both Neil Jacobs, the acting NOAA administrator appointed by Trump, and Julie K. Roberts, the former NOAA Deputy Chief of Staff of Communications Director, twice violated codes of the agency's scientific integrity policy amid their involvement in the NOAA statement. Um, it, uh, issuing false weather forecasts is a crime, by the way. You can be fined. You can be imprisoned. <laughs> so... Once again, I mean, this is just a part of the stuff that's just lost in this sea of ineptitude, of lying, of pettiness, of of causing harm, ca causing people to do things they don't need to do, or or keeping them, in the case of FEMA aid now, keeping them from trying to get aid that is there and that he has lied and said it's been given to, to illegal immigrants, which... FEMA does not have any power to do that. They cannot do that, even if they wanted to. Trump just makes it up. Um, and, and and this is just, this is why, you know, the, the polls, they just don't, they're, they're, they're ridiculous. Um, I, I'm looking more into the polls, why people keep saying that the polls are starting to have Trump ahead. And yeah, there are Trump polls, one, one of the groups with some weird long name with one of the polls that shows Trump's ahead, uh, you look and it's funded by an organization called American Greatness. Hmm, wonder who that's affiliated with. And you look at their website and it's all sorts of articles about how the Democrats are destroying America. So, so this is something that Trump tried to do in 2022, the Republicans did, uh, tried to do in 2020. And... And it's, it's kind of dumb because what his takeaway from all the polling being wrong with Hillary Clinton that showed her so far ahead, but he ended up squeaking out in the end. Um, what his takeaway should have been is that polls projecting, projecting you way far in the lead can work to your detriment. And 
that that certainly happened with Hillary Clinton. That the complacency there was very real among the voting base and among among the turnout. Um, so, so I do love that these polls are showing him, uh, even polls financed by Republicans uh, and aligned with Republican PACs, I do love that they are showing him close or even, um, because I mean, it, it is lighting people on fire on the Democrat side. They are running scared, they're in a panic, and I kind of love that because that, that's what we need to have for voter turnout. We don't need voices of reason like me being all calm, saying, mm, don't worry, we, we got this. That, 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 we don't need me um, for turnout. We need people like CNN and, and organizations trying to, to increase their viewership, making this look like an actual close race. Um, so, so I am thankful for that. And, and I just, I don't know, Trump, Trump should be running scared. He should be letting his people know that they're in the, that there aren't in the lead to try to get their turnout up. Uh, but he's not. <laughs> they're paying organizations to put out fake polls. And uh, kind of love it. Um, anyway, Trump, even, uh, even back in 2019, was lying about hurricanes. Still lying about hurricanes five years later. People in 2019 were having their scientific careers tarnished by association with Trump, and uh, I mean, some some things never change. Um, okay, that's it. It's uh, go enjoy your Monday, and we will talk tomorrow. Bye.